And back to the gentleman who set his dog incorrectly or let his dog set incorrectly and then he told his dog he was good. I don't think his dog's learned anything from him. Okay, Archie. But now, I just released Archie to get up and wander around a little bit. He just kept pulling my leash. On my leash. But anytime you, I feel you touch a dog, talk to a dog, whatever, give him a treat, whatever, when he's doing something wrong, you've encouraged that behavior. And same thing the other day, the last of the guy's dog was really whining, and instead of the guy correcting the dog, he started petting the dog. And then the dog, of course, he wants to whine more so he can get petted more. Uh, I feel that whatever you're trying to build confidence in a dog, for me, anyway, I, the most important thing is if the owner and the dog's there, I got to get the confidence in the owner. The dog will pick his confidence up way faster than the owner will. Uh, and then we just had to get the owner to do it. For me, a big way to do that is for me to handle the dog, let the owner see the dog doing good, and then I give the dog back to the owner. And then the dog does better for the owner. So I just built confidence in both of them. So it just keeps progressing from there. And, and sometimes they just forget they have a confidence issue and everybody's ready. So, is the mic working good? So, we got any questions yet? Not yet. <clears throat> Confidence in a dog comes back to, for me, I wrap my leg like this, the dog like loses his mind. I got a big dog now that he'll hit the ground like you shot him or something whenever I slap my leg. And I about got him out of it now through lessons. But it's amazing for me to see the difference with a dog with any kind of noise, anything. It just changes their whole their whole life. But I think it's because people shelter them from noises. They shelter them from the mainstream anything. People, livestock, town, trucks, trailers, cars. We get dogs that barks at overpasses. Uh, you name it. I mean, I think we've had them around the house. But I think the confidence in the owner is way harder to build than the dog. The dog will get over something, but the owner still goes back to the flashback of his dog not being good, and that's what he's that's what he's going to read, and that's what he's going to go off of. So, so I think that pretty much covers the confidence in a dog. For I'm going to talk, which I try to talk about every week. Uh, anything I do, whether it's in a lesson, a class, a clinic, whatever it might be, but. There, for me, there's no reason that a dog shouldn't sit like this, stand like this, or lay here and have a loose leash on. The, I feel a lot of times the reason they don't have it is because they didn't get socialized as a little puppy. And people didn't spend time doing it. I think a lot of people think that this is a waste of time to stand around with a dog and do nothing but talk. But I've learned over the years that's some of the most important training a dog will get because they've got to learn patience. Patience is something dogs can't get from staying busy. I mean, they've got to get patience from just waiting. I've seen that a lot with cattle dogs over the years. If a dog's waiting his turn to work, he's got to be patient. He can't be there jumping and barking and lunging on the end of a chain or whatever it is. He's got to, he's got to put his own mind to work to control his body. And for me, working dogs over the years, two or three dogs at one time, it's the same. When I say one dog's name, the other dogs can't move. And for me, I've done that a lot of times over the years, but then when somebody else does it with their dog, if they teach your dog set and stay, or they teach your dog walk on without a leash, they put a leash on the dog and they start pulling. <clears throat> and I feel the reason is, is because they haven't spent enough time with them. <clears throat> so we hearing me okay? Yeah. I see my camera crew over here throwing stuff back and forth. It makes me think that we're not hearing one another tonight. I'm just oh. getting both my earbuds. Oh. You ready for questions? Yes. Okay. Rodney asks, I want to have two dogs trained for walking together on or off leash on country road. Any suggestions? Start always for me I start with one dog, then I go with the other dog. The thing I feel what was the name? Rodney. Rodney. The thing is for me when people is I was telling a gentleman last night, when somebody comes to me with a dog or a dog problem, it's like I put a blank piece of paper on the wall and then I get my crayons or my color, my paint, whatever out in a brush and I start trying to put my picture together. But I see people so many times they have the whole picture on the wall and then they figure out how to make it work and it's just hard that way. But for me, if you take one dog 
and you teach it to act like this, you get your second dog to act like this, then you put your two dogs together, like right here, my dog's trying to pull my leash because he wants to go play with his brother from another <laughs> parents, not just a mother, but parents. Uh, but I can't let my dog pull my leash because of the fact that if I do, then there's no set rules. You gotta have a set rule. For me, if you set, take your dog right in, take one dog. I, I feel one of the things hard with people in trying to walk one dog is a lot of times they can't decide which side they want the dog on. One minute dog's on the left, next minute dog's on the right, next minute dog's in front of them, next minute behind them. So I feel that if you're going to do that, you've got to get one dog and teach him that he can't pull the leash. We lost it again. We can't pull the leash. If you get your dog to set where he can't, he can't pull your leash, it doesn't matter where your dog is. And for me, I go back, I call the handle because the leashes we have, we sell them, cycle dog leashes. I go back to the handle on my dogs and I'll, I'll have them six foot from me and I'll try to sneak away. And if I can, I'll bite them with my leash a little bit, my pinch collar, and let them know they can't do it. So I start there and then I put my dog on my left. I always walk dogs on the left, but I walk my dog on the left lead, on the left leg. And I won't let his toes pass my toes. If you go back to those rules, do not let your dog's toes pass your toes. And Archie, right? On uh, healing, because 99% of the dogs that we get, the people don't want them to heal because it's too much work. But I'm going to try to show you with Archie. Archie, come. Now, and when I walk with Archie, Archie, walk. Good. Stop. Archie can't go past my toes. If I keep walking, Archie walk. He's got. And this is a dog that a week ago you couldn't even walk on a leash. But if I start here with him, and then when you get serious about it, Archie set. Archie set. Archie's a little bit ornery. Good boy. Now he's not this is setting. Archie walk. And when we take off, good. He can his feet can, his nose, I don't care, it'll be a foot out there on this dog, but his toes can't pass my toes. And the toes thing for me is with any dog I'm trying to walk. But Ron, if you go back and you get one dog walking good, get the other dog walking good, I'm not sure where you live, but you could always get a hold of Dari try to come by a lesson, whatever, to figure out what works best for you. And I mean, I remember seeing Dari running around all the time with two big old huge dogs running down the, side of, down the road in town, actually. And she had a dog on either side, and neither dog ever pulled her. Me, with my cow dogs, I remember having six, eight dogs at a time walk beside me and behind me without a leash on anybody. Nobody could pass me. So it's just a matter of repetition, repetition, just consistent, being over and over and over. Do the same thing with one dog, then start it with the other dog. For me, I work the other dog five minutes. Wait a little while, get them back out, do it over and over and over and over. And so you get it where you want it. I was telling somebody today that I feel that if you get a dog, let's say you get him to set five times in a row, what's saying at one time and make it happen, then all at once you you say set down and then your dog's like oh crap i don't know what i'm gonna do now because they had a new word on it i feel that you lost a couple of them so you got to go backwards and kind of catch back up again and the thing is is you didn't throw it out you still have it there you just don't have it as solid as you did the last time you set your dog on a word set so some people use heel like i said i don't never have any i don't even know anybody that teaches their dog to heel Nobody cares. <clears throat> they just want their dog to not pull on a leash. So for me, I think that's huge for a dog. Like, I'm going to try to show you here with Archie. For me, if I try to sneak off from my dog, like here, I won't pull Archie because I did not ask him to get up. Before I could tighten his leash or touch his leash, I need to ask Archie to move. Archie, come. Good. So now, with Archie, I'm going to try like here. I, I, good. 
He can't tighten his leash. <clears throat> he can't. And see there, before I ever got a chance to pull on him, he gave to me. Now here, he may not give because he got his nose in the ground. Good boy. But as soon as I touched his a little bit with that pinch collar, he's like, hey, I'll just get back to you. And that's what you want to do, but if you can't do this with your dogs, I don't feel you'll get a dog to heal on each side of you on a walk. But at the same time, if you go back to consistency, keeping dogs behind you, I'll take my leash a lot of times and do like this with my dog. This dog don't work. I got to have a longer leash. I got a real short dog. <laughs> but dogs when I'm walking. And some dogs are funny because they'll try to get out there to where they can just get their nose to touch that leash. It's almost like a game for them. But I think sometimes that builds a handler's confidence in themselves to get their dog under control. But like I said, I go back to the leash at all times. So, you got any more questions, Brett? Yeah. Got one from Mary. And Mary asks. Can you build confidence in a nine to ten year old dog that is really shy and timid outside of her? I can build confidence in any dog. Uh, now, some dogs depends on the dogs. I say that. Hey, Bianca. Hi. <clears throat> I still say that whenever you get some of the dogs, especially their supporter collars, that are really timid bred dogs. I don't know if you could ever get them out of it. You can make them better, but get them out of it is hard. For me, I dogs are <clears throat> worried dogs, scared dogs, nervous dogs. If I can start getting them with a pack of dogs, it'll help a lot. Uh, you just have to be able to get them with that pack. It's Mary with Bronk. So yes, it's the same thing. You to try to get your dogs back to being with a pack of dogs. It helps them. People try to fix so many dog problems with people, and I think it's hard. Uh, dogs are dogs and humans are humans, and it's hard to convince a lot of humans of that. And it's hard to convince some dogs of that because they think they're human because they get to eat off the dinner table. I mean, I see dogs that get to eat off their own plate at the dinner table. So for me, I always constantly tell people, you can let your dog do what you want. They just can't choose what they get to do. But <laughs> Like with Bronk, I mean, I feel that he's a lot more confident now than he was when we met you and Dusty. And I feel that Dusty and yourself are a lot more confident in your handling of your dog than you were before. So, uh, yes, for me to get the dog out with dogs helps a lot. Get your dog out even with yourselves, but have confidence in your dog and yourself. So, we got any more questions before I ask Bianca? Have you got any questions for today since I haven't seen you all week? I take that as a no. <clears throat> so, I'm going to touch a little bit on setting. I constantly see people come to me, and Bianca's gotten really good at it now. If I ask somebody, will your dog set and stay? And they say, well, you, Bianca says, no, pretty much not. Because for me, if somebody asks me if my dog is set and stay, I'd just be like, no. He'll lay and stay pretty good, but he doesn't set and stay very good because I don't set my dogs much. But I'll probably start now since I got some labs. I'll teach them to set, which actually my dogs do set pretty decent. But when people ask a dog to set, like uh, Archie, Archie, come, Archie, set, good, very unusual. He set first to ask, but this is what. He called me out one time in California. I think she was trying to make a fool out of me, which isn't hard to do sometimes, but she came up with the wrong scenario. She, she had to really fight with him. And I use this all the time in classes and lessons and stuff. But like Archie, come. Archie, set. Good. For me, that's the way you ask a dog to set. Name command. This lady came out of the stands and she said she was a dog trainer, but her dogs wouldn't set. And I don't know why a dog won't set, but so I helped one of her dogs ask her to set the other dog and she literally she called her dog, she's like, hey, hey, look, look. Now 
I want you to sit down. If you've seen that until I sat down and it stopped because I went past the command. And this lady fought with her dog for a while and she couldn't get it to set. And I asked her, let me try. She literally handed me the leash, Archie come. She had this and her dog set, which Archie didn't, but her dog set. And the people went crazy. I don't know, there's a few hundred people watching this, whatever. But everybody went crazy because her dog done what I'd never ask. And then her, where she learned her training technique, and she said she taught herself. And I explained to her, I felt that she went past the word. Like me, I'm a, if Archie will listen, which he does sometimes, Archie come. Now watch, Archie. Archie, I want you to sit. Good. <laughs> you see? Now watch this. Archie, come. Archie. Archie, I want you to sit. Good. Now watch. Archie, sit. You got to shake. Archie, sit. See, now he's like, you didn't say all my words this time. So, what? Archie. Archie. Sit. He's like, no. Nope. The rules. Now, two minutes ago, he said every time I would say sit, but I have words to it. And that's what people do constantly. Archie, come. He don't like that motorcycle or car or whatever that thing was. Archie. Sit. Now, Archie's focused on everything but me. Now, watch the difference with him. Archie, sit, hot, 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 good. Now, for me, what I've done with Archie, we've had him, what did we say, a week, eight, nine days, whatever, to not and I had it really consistent. And then I changed words. You know what else I think could be a piece <clears throat> of it for him? I was watching him, and when you have your hands like this, and you yes, any at kind it, of things in front. Like well, attention. One hundred percent of your attention on your dog. But he was setting Fine. when we first Perfect. started. He set great, Very but as soon as you change it, they go back. And that's what I told a guy last night. It's because people are not being consistent with a command. What well, are you getting attacked by a dog? He you... Brett's earbud was a cookie. Oh. <laughs> got a tree hunting dog. But with this dog, like I said, when we got here, he started sitting really good with one word. Then I added words to it. Then I added fingers to it. And I added like the lady did when I got down and talked to my dog. And it's just nothing that's consistent with what I've done with this pup. And so he has no reason to be consistent. Now, it treats, oh, he even pooped in the middle of my forehead. Isn't that dog crap right there? I thought it was him though. Oh, maybe not. I never seen him, but he might have been sitting when he did it. Be nice, my short little buddy. He might be talented. <laughs> He's but talented. the biggest thing is for me with any of the dogs in the dog training, be consistent with what you do. And I always try to tell people, like I was telling somebody recently, this guy's like, well, I watched this video, and so I started doing that, and it just didn't work for me. Then I was watching this other video, and then I started trying that. And he said it just couldn't work. And he told me like six or eight different videos he'd tried. And I said, did you ever think it maybe that it was you? And, and he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, well, I think people grasp for straws when it comes to dog training because everybody trains a dog. I mean, hell, I could stop one of these skateboarders by here and they'd probably show me how to teach this dog sit and if they didn't get bit. But the thing is for me is I've always told people that if, if you've got a training program like I feel I have, and I feel I made my own. 
because I went to a lot of different places, a lot of different people in the country, and learned from a lot of different people and a lot of different places with a lot of different dogs, mostly cattle dogs for 20 years. But take a little bitty piece of what I learned and add it to what I had, and I never threw my stuff out. If I could find something that was better than what I had, a piece of it, I'd replace it. But I never threw my stuff out. And people don't. I mean, they go to YouTube and they, they swear what I've seen is gospel. Facebook. Hell, they never lie on Facebook. Everything on Facebook's a fact. Well, but the, the other <clears> piece <throat> to that for me is that that information could be great for a certain number of dogs. So but it could not number. be great for no dog, though, too. It, it could be. But, I mean, I think that there's both facets out there. They are. I think that people get impatient, and so they just turn the page a little too fast, and they don't give things enough of a opportunity in some cases. And it's a lot. I mean, and like I said, nobody knows how something works Until in 10 it. minutes. Right. It's being consistent with anything. I taught a dog to set sand banana one time that the people couldn't teach him to set sand set. I'm like, well, shit, I'll fix it. So I thought he said the same banana. In 10 minutes, I'd say banana and dog sit down. They're well, like, well, that don't work because we'll never remember to say banana. So it doesn't matter. Whatever you say, don't listen anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start somewhere, but you've got to start, and then you've got to be consistent with what it is. Tattoo the rules on the arms. <clears throat> yeah. Hey, I write on my hand. I still got a little bit of ink on there. <laughs> it is. It comes back to what works for people. Like Bianca, I told her I want her to train and act like me more, not you. Because I'm, I'm of the, the fact the that we hurt people's feelings telling the truth, but they understand it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're just too nice. You just always want everybody smiling and be happy and shit so you don't have to share your Kleenexes. We don't care because we don't carry Kleenexes. They just had to wipe them on the shirt sleeve. Not really. I've, but, got, I've got a big dog. Yeah, not really, but we do. The thing is, for me, is I do hurt people's feelings, and I don't mean to, you know. And Bianca seen me a time or two. People really get upset. And they get upset because it, it does hurt whenever people sees me take their dog that I've never met, and five minutes I get their dog set and listening to mine and being, hey, when they can't do it for a year, they owned it. And it hurts them. But the thing is, for me, I don't have the gray area with their dog that they have. Everything's black and white, and I want to keep it that way. I want to stop any problem before it occurs. If I can stop it before it happens, I don't have to fix it. And any time you have to fix a problem, not only do you have to break a bad habit, but you got to replace it with the right habit. And that's hard for people to do because some people can't chew bubble gum and walk at the same time. Well, and so many people have a really ingrained thought process. They do. I mean, I can I see your pup for a second? I Don't see, screw him up. Oh, Come here, Archie. <clears throat> I see so many people just doing this to get their dog to sit. Yes. When it's just a marionette. And if you lift up a little bit, the hips rock back naturally. And you don't have to put nearly as much pressure, yet people are always like reefing their dog backwards when it's just not necessary but it's ingrained the last 10 dogs they've had that's how they've done it and maybe they've had some success with it so that's what they know i pull more dogs forward than i ever do backwards always because you it brings them <clears throat> but the even with forward. a puppy if you want to take an eight week old puppy and start teaching him to set pull him forward yeah and then give him a little bit of slack and he'll sit down instantly yeah and then you put a word with it and before you know it, they've got a set. And it's hard for people to witness sometimes their dogs being have for someone else who they feel don't love them like they do. And that's the problem with dogs. People don't put a foundation on a dog before they ruin them. Look Scout over there, he's chilling. We met him a few months ago and he didn't even have that word in his vocabulary. Chill? Yeah. <laughs> He was just busy. <clears throat> and now he don't care. He's just happy to be a dog. I see him in a round pen a couple days ago, last weekend, what it was. Bianca was doing a lesson. And she went into the barn. And me and her lesson was in the round pen. And Scout got off his deal and went to the gate. And he heard Bianca opening the door out of the barn. And, I mean, he ran. 
and jumped and slid across that little thing and b the edge is what stopped him or he would have went on over to the viewing area. And those people were like, really? I'm like, yeah. He knew he wasn't there and he knew mommy was coming. Got a little too curious. Yes. Yeah, so too got, soon. Perch. But for me, that the dogs, is that, and that's the fun part of it. And that's the thing that for me, I tell people all the time, I say, your dog don't own nothing because they don't have a job. Now, for me, with my dogs, that's not true because they work every day. I mean, a couple of days ago, they were so tired in the day because Bear and Roxy both helped me do like seven or eight, nine lessons, whatever it was. It was just a crazy day. And they were tired. I mean, I had to make Roxy get up and come with me because she's like, no, nah, I'm done. I'm just going to chill out for a while. But Scout's getting to be the same way. You know, he's your little baby. So you won't get him in the situations I get my dogs in, which I don't expect you to, you know. But I get my dogs in some worse situations, but I feel both of my dogs handle it better than Scout would. He's handling it better and better all the time. And for me, with training, that is the consistent part of it, is you consistently protect your dog. If he starts getting in trouble, you take care of it. And I think that's what it's, for, what it's about, but so many people try to protect her dog because shit it's below 70 degrees I better turn the air conditioner on her you know turn the heat on whatever it is they're like oh my god I didn't get quite enough dog food I gotta get one more piece in there you know and all those things I think is what well it's what keeps us in business people kind of spoiling dogs so well and people not having time <clears throat> yes time because I, I don't go the time I don't buy the exposure to different situations, I can, I can feed on that. But that's part of time. Yes and no. You always go somewhere, you know. You can take your dogs to Wilco or Home Depot or to expose them. I feel sometimes the bad thing about it when people do that shit or stuff is when they get to the counters. They let them get a treat when they get to the drive through at the bank, and then their dogs lose their mind because they can't wait to get their treat. That's all they focus on from the time they get to the driveway is that treat. It's not about them learning. They're learning, but they're learning a bad habit. I'd have a panic attack if my dog scratched my car, <clears throat> and I see it every day because I like to go through the coffee shop, preferably every day. And there's almost always a dog out the window, and I'm just seeing its nails clawing. Yeah, wanting a treat. paint, and I'm just like, Mm. Oh, yeah, hurts. I, I can't handle it. So we got a question? Yeah, you've got a couple questions. Uh, Dar, you want to go over here really quick? Uh, Joey said, oh, yeah, it's a lot of, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, what do you do if an owner jump or the dog jumps on the owner? That's the question. You know, we answer that question about a thousand times a month, I think. For me, it goes back to when dogs jump on owners, I feel that the owners, a lot of times they raise their hands so the dog can't touch them because a lot of the dogs that jump on owners teeth dog, uh, put their teeth on them too. So the owners don't want the dog's teeth on them so they move their hands so it doesn't happen. But at the same time, a lot of times people encourage the dogs to jump on them by touching them rather than correcting the dog, teaching the dog how to approach you, and then patting the dog. If you teach your dog that, come to you and set or stand and not raise his feet off the ground to be patted that's what he will do but if your dog jumps on you and you raise your hand you lift your dog with you uh, I see people hide their hands behind their back because their dog's mouthing on them and I see people turn their back to a dog I don't agree with any of those techniques I've never had them to work for me not saying they don't work but I've never had it happen so I go back to it. my dog jumps on me it's like if you've done your homework with the pinch collars, I mean, we sell this command collar, and you've done your work where if your dog is wrong, you add, and then when they do right, you tell them good. When your dog tries to jump on you, for me, it's simple, no, it can happen. And if they put their teeth on you, it's no, it can't happen, it can't surf counters, it can't get on furniture, whatever the case may be, but it's not quit, get down, get off, don't do it, stop, it's just no, but then you call your dog right. Majority of the time, when you run your dog off from you, when they're jumping on you, they leave. Me, I call my dog right back. I make them behave, and 
then I'll pet them and tell them they're a good dog. Uh, this dog here, he was really bad about jumping on people, I guess. Bianca, will you walk over and see if he'll jump on you? <clears throat> now just pet him. Watch that dog poop right there. Now just stop. There you go. Good job. So for me, <clears throat> one of the ways jumping on people is, I'm going to try to show you with Bianca. For me, I'm going to, are we in a good spot right here? Yeah, you're good. <clears throat> so, jumps on people and yourselves. I'll start with this dog, and I'm going to use Bianca for my help. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do is tell Bianca that I'm training on my dog, so when I ask you to stop, please stop. And when you do get here and I tell you to pet my dog, pet my dog twice like that, and then just stop, okay. and then back up. So, you want to walk over here? Yep. Now, hold on. Okay. See my dog? Archie. Sit. Hot. Archie. Hot. Sit. Good. Now step over. Now just pet him twice. Now just back up, please. Thank you. If you start out with this with your dogs that jump on you, they'll start understanding that they have to sit or stand. And all four feet basically have to be on the ground before they get touched. And don't let the person who comes to pet them start oohing and on and patting them on the head and rubbing their bellies. And then they will start when people approach. So I'm hoping that answers your question. But that's the thing is you just got to stop the behavior. Don't let the dog run away. And I'll start it with a leash with my own dog. If I have a dog jumps on me, you know, jump and run, I'll keep my collar on, my command collar. And if I've done my work, six foot of leash, and try to sneak away from my dog and keep him on a loose leash, then the rest of the stuff just starts happening easier and easier. So, got another question? Yeah, someone said, um, do you use e-collars as well to teach them not to pull on the leash or only command collar? How do you teach them to walk off leash? I, huh? I've taught dogs to not pull on a leash by using everything you can name. I mean, even in a class a while back, somebody was trying to teach your dog to set stay. Somebody made the comment that the reason I had so much success is because I used a pinch collar. So, and good leashes. But I went to that person, I used her three cent Walmart leash and her two cent I don't know, buy mark collar or whatever they had. And it took me, I don't know, two or three minutes to get their dog to set. In. But it's not as much about the pinch collars or the prong collars or the shock collars or whatever choke ropes or choke chains or whatever you might want to use, but it's how you handle them, you know. And that's pretty much the way of anything. I mean, spurs on a horse, same thing. Accelerator on a car. The more gas, the more you push, the more you get. I learned on my little Kubota, the more you push, the less you get sometimes. <laughs> that let it up to go faster so it don't make no sense but it's the way it works so it comes back to I, I don't know that 100% of the dogs that we get they pull on a leash I feel I don't know if we ever got a dog that don't pull on a leash have we I take that as no because she can't remember it that one dog Ranger <laughs> Ranger was he pulled, really nice, yes, he? he just screams. He just screams. <clears throat> so maybe we've had one out of a couple thousand. <clears throat> but the phones were much deeper. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the phone's <laughs> easy to fix. For me, dogs pulling on a leash is so, I don't know, it's simple for me. I mean, we literally, I have dogs that from one end of my dog kennels to the other end, they quit pulling on a leash for me. Uh, I think it was you here a while back. We had a dog that like drag you down and you were gone for a day and you come back and you're like, geez, I can't believe this dog. You don't pull on leash no more. But it's because yeah. because of the fact that I never let him pull on my leash. If you let a dog pull you, then you've got to start back a step or two. And this dog was terrible when he got there. He'd, he couldn't do this a week ago. <clears throat> he couldn't sit there by your foot and and think about anything he had to be trying to move but for me and i would show you but we don't have a dog here i don't know where you live but if you have a dog that pulls you on a leash and you're here local 
you should get a hold of Daria and try to figure out where we're going to be next week and catch up with us, and we'll show you how to teach your dog not to pull on leash. You know, I kind of <coughs> think that this goes back a little bit to the confidence that we, we were also talking about. If you've got a dog that's truly confident, they don't need to pull you down the street. The thing is, for my thought on this is always... <coughs> I feel that dogs drag people on a leash because they think the people want them to drag them on a leash. And I mean, I can't not believe any other difference. They pull a leash because they think they need to. Because I can put this pinch collar on any human. Well, not any human. I know a couple that would drag me up the hill probably. But as a general rule, if I put this pinch collar on a human and I put a leash on and I held onto it and told them to drag me up the hill, they're going to sit down or hit me. They're not going to pull me up the hill. Dog pulls you up the hill because they think that they're supposed to pull you up on the hill because of the way you react to the dog. So I'm going to try. Uh, who was it asking about the leash pulling dog? This was Michelle. The fancy leashes, Michelle, that we sell, Bianca. She's my dog. <laughs> dog starts pulling me when we get a block from the park. <clears throat> so Michelle, here's for me. You got the handle in your hand so I don't steal it from you. Yeah. Not for me, <laughs> if you do your homework before you head to the park, <laughs> it'll help. I, I just want to make sure I had a hold of him. I didn't want him to outrun me on video through the dog park with those little two of his legs. <laughs> I'd be embarrassed for the rest of my life. So, I think that this is what people do with their dogs. They let their dogs get to here, and then they drag their dogs to them. <clears throat> For me, if you let your dogs get to here, even on a walk, and you, ah, 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 they will give to you with the pinch collar. And for me, if I'm going to do it, I'll be like, ah, good. Now, if you watch my hand, from the time my leash starts getting tight, I'm going to give, I'm going to take, and I'm going to give. My hand will be back in the same spot it was when I started, pretty close. But I'll have slack in my leash, and my dog will be an inch or two closer to me. And the park or anywhere to the pet co to get a treat or bank, if people's walking their dogs, people let their dogs get in front of them like this. And then they always ask me, how can I get my dog back here? For me, the way I get my dog back here is I don't let him out there. If you don't let your dog in front of you go into the dog park, most time they don't pull as bad. For me, confidence is free. When you start the dog park, you have confidence in yourself and your dog that your dog's going to behave. A lot of times they will behave. But... I say, if I'm going to the dog park, which I try not to do, when I, my dog, as soon as it starts pulling my leash, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to go in training mode. I'll go to the handle on my leash, and I'm just going to try to sneak away from my dog. And whenever I do, I'm going to get him out of here, and I'm going to be, ah, and that collar will bite him four, five, or ten times, and I'm going to give him slack, and I'm going to let him think about it. And I'm going to let him stand there and think about it. I'm not going to start walking. I'm not going to ask him to sit. I'm not going to ask him to stand. I don't care what he does. He just can't tighten my leash again. If you go back in that mode, I think your dog will quit pulling the leash. But you can't set your mind on, okay, I got 30 minutes, I got five minutes to get the dog park, my dog gets to play for 20 minutes, I got five minutes to get back to the house. If you do, you'll lose. For me, I would leave the house. I have my mind that I'm going to train my dog to not pull my leash on the way to the dog park. If we get to the dog park, my dog gets to play. If we don't, he just gets trained to exercise. But I think that'll fix your problem. Thank you. Man, it's a pretty cool leash. Rodney asked, is the Herm Springer the only good pinch collar? The what? The hump spring, the metal, the hump spring collars. Oh, you know, I never use metal collars. I've got some laying around in the house, uh, in my kennels actually. But I never use any. Got a dog up here. I, it's a command collar, and I've been a dealer for him forever. <coughs> that dog don't pull. He skis.
last forever. And not saying it. I just used a prong collar the other day that somebody had on dog, big germ shepherd. But that's what they had on the dog, so that's what I used, so that didn't want to change it. There's like for the dogs that really pull, those ones don't create any sores on their neck, and the metal ones can be really hard if a dog really pulls. But I don't know, because I've never used the metal collars enough to see if they make a sore or if they don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I couldn't say they do or they don't. I, I go back to, with these collars, I think they're the easier collar to put on a dog and have consistency on the adjustment. The majority of the prong collars that comes to my house, these two pieces touch on the prong collar, <clears throat> which means you have no bite. All you have is a pulling tool. So, the, and I think the prong collars that I'm aware of, the reason being is because they're so hard to put on and off. Is why they try and slip them over the head. Yes, they slip them over the head. Yes. Snap. Yeah. Yeah. Or they leave them too long, so they can hook them the way they're supposed to hook them. Correctly. With these collars here, you just pop them apart. You can take links out of them. You can make them smaller. You can pop apart, put links in them. I mean, they come hard. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tater. So. We had one on Tater. But you could just put them back together. But you could just put them back together. And so for me, I always go with these. And we sell them. If you need one, you can get a hold of us. Uh, but I always go to that. Another of people trying to lead dogs is I see people with really uncomfortable leashes and it hurts their hands so they get aggravated before they ever get started on training and then by the time they're 30 minutes into the training session they're all aggravated and their dog don't understand why he can't do anything right so it goes back to that uh, any more questions? Not yet, no. so <clears throat> for me I get asked a lot I mean, I don't even know how many times a month or a week or a day, but people ask me, why does my dog respond, their dog respond to me faster and better than it does the owner? I feel it is because I have confidence in myself. I have confidence in my dog handling, and I have confidence in the experiences I've had with dogs. And I, I have confidence that their dog will respect me because I will show them the right way to do things and that's what they don't get from the handlers and the owners. <laughs> Bianca the other day was doing a lesson herself and the people wouldn't uh, quit asking questions. They were like yada 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 yada. So they got Bianca to yada 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 trying to answer questions because she wanted to be polite and this is where she's acting like Dari instead of me. So her dog started making mistakes and I seen it and she wasn't correcting her mistakes because she was being nice, which I've always been told you're supposed to be polite, but I don't always follow rules. So I just went over and got her, I went over and got her leash and said, hey, if y'all want to talk, go ahead. And I took her dog and started working with her dog. And it wasn't your, no, it was your fault, bottom line, yeah. because you was acting like Dari. <laughs> If you had been acting like me, you would have lost track of the question totally, which I do all the time. But my dog wouldn't have made a mistake. So that's for me. That's a lot of the things with dog training is. It's hard. It's hard to make up, especially for me when a dog just about gets it, and something really distracts them and they lose it. Then I got to sometimes spend ten minutes to get it back to where I was just at. So I feel that. If they don't distract me from my dog, they don't distract my dog near as bad from the t thing I'm trying to teach my dog. So that's why a lot of times I don't. People ask me how hot it's going to be tomorrow, and I'm like, I thought it was snowing. I don't even know what they said because I wasn't paying no mind because I was concentrating hard on my dog. So I think that's one of the big things. And if you know. He's still being really patient, which surprises me. He's not pulled me one time. He's moved a little bit, but he hasn't tried to pull my leash, which is pretty cool for him because he's notorious for leash pulling. So we got any questions, Brett? Nope. What time of day is it? Time to go home? It is. I can't see. We're 10 to 7. Oh. So, uh, Bianca, you find anything you want to talk about? 
Do we want to announce that you're going to be with us four days a week now? We yeah, Bianca is training with us now, and she's going to start working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. I might get a couple more hours off on Monday. <laughs> and so I think that, well, maybe everybody on here hasn't met Bianca, but this is Bianca. She trains with us. This is Dari. She's the one you always talk to on the phone when you call, or email, or text, or whatever. Thanks. Yeah, she's the one who fixes all the problems that I create. Well, most of them. I don't know about all of them, but the majority of them. And she, I think she enjoys it, too, because she never knows what she's getting into. That's what my wife told me when, right, right after we got married. She's like, you know what? It's a never boring moment with you. So, And it's pretty true. And now it's just with the dogs. For me, it's so much fun to train dogs every day and have Dari run the show so I don't have to do any of that stuff. I just get to work dogs. If anything gets complicated, ask them to call Dari. She'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Whether they need dog food, <laughs> toenails trimmed, bath on the dog, cry on the shoulder, call Dory. Uh, yeah. So, Bianca, tell us what's the most fun experience you've had since you've been with us. Training or learning? That's Spending time with me. That's a very general question. Huh? <laughs> That's a very general question. It is, but what? Dogs. But what dog? What, what, what happened? <clears throat> oh, um, well, I want to say my dog because I never thought I could get there with him. Like right now, four months ago, I would be panicked that he'd be he was going to leave. He's like 25 yards away from me, but he's not going <clears> to <throat> leave. And if I if he does, he'll come back to me when I call him. And that, like, I want everyone to have that because. Me too, and that's one of the huge things for me and Dari since we started this venture, is. I want people to be able to have their dog off leash. Yeah. I mean, the other day, yesterday, that lady, she was like traumatized. We're bad. We'll throw somebody out to the wolves, I call it. But three days ago, I took off. I told that lady with her little dog, I'm like, let's go. And she's like, where are we going? I said, we're going to head for the woods. I said, Daddy's up there to pack a dog somewhere. Yeah. And she's like, uh, uh, I said, well, you're good. You know, and so we took off. A little bit, and that dog fights. A little bit, a lot. <laughs> yeah, but it's not very big. <clears throat> so we took out walking me and her, and we happened to be, we went through the horse woods and was coming around to the Green Gate, the other end of the rope arena, and Dari and... Uh, I, had like, I think I had eight dogs with yeah, me. Yeah, and her and, uh, what's her name, uh, Adrian. Oh, yeah, Adrian. They were coming up yeah. the hill, and I told that lady, I said, oh, there's Dari, because I seen the dogs down the bottom. And one of the dogs didn't listen to Dari, and it seen me, and it come running as hard as could. Big old German Shepherd. And when it got there, that little dog jumped on it. <laughs> I mean, this started, it wanted to fight. And I growled at him, and they both just quit. And the lady was traumatized, and Dari was trying to call the dog. And I was just laughing because I thought it was pretty funny. But whenever it was all over, that lady's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And the thing is, is she went back with Dari yesterday and done it again, and this dog got in another little scruffle with a big old huge dog. And I don't know why it picks on the big dogs, but it does. So it ain't scared. It's not got a little syndrome or whatever. <laughs> in the kennels, I told her, I said, just come over and sit down, because her dog was still loose with like eight or ten dogs running around. She came over, sat in the chair. Me and her was talking. She said she would never have believed. And I think she told me that if I would have told her that she could have done this in four lessons, she wouldn't have believed it, and she probably wouldn't have came and worked with us. But you know what she also said to me <sighs> while, you were, while we were on our walk? If you would have said that to her, she would have said, and if if this doesn't happen, I will expect my money back. Oh, yeah, she didn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah. So, for me, as with her dog, in her mind, her dog's a killer that wants to just kill dogs and eat people. And in my mind, her dog's just a cool little dog that needs to go be a dog. And that's the hard thing is for these dogs to get to go be a dog. And that's that's with you and, and Scout. Yeah. I remember when we got Scout to where he wouldn't run away, then he wouldn't leave. Yeah. And then he wouldn't start fighting. Then he wouldn't try to buy people. Yeah. And then he was really possessive of you. Yeah. Where now, he's... I Dogs or run around with dogs or go lay down 50 or 100 feet from you and watch you do a lesson. He don't care yeah. because he's not so glued to you that he can't imagine life without being in your yeah. pocket. We got so. back today. We left him for a few hours at the vineyard, and we walked in, and Ulysses said, he looks so calm in there. And the scout we know from four months ago 
would be barking for four hours straight, like his his vocal pipe never went away, and he'd be sweating and drooling and so stressed. And Ulysses is just like, gosh, he just looks so calm. <laughs> <laughs> and Constant. I feel yeah. <laughs> that it is that way because the confidence that you grew mm -hmm. by working with so many dogs with us and getting to see our dogs, Dari and mine, yep. <clears throat> just chilling, that you knew your dog could do it then. I'm it's just a matter yeah. of getting it to happen. And that just takes time and consistency yep. between both people. And it takes building up the confidence in yep. the team. It's always a team when it's dog and a person. It's a team. Yep. And I go back to the people try to talk to the dog like a human, and they confuse the dog. And for me, I feel like I was a little bit of a skeptic. I hadn't met you guys, and Janice was really encouraging in getting both of our dogs up to you guys. But I had had experiences with trainers before, and I felt like they didn't get me any farther than I was, and not that they wouldn't do that for other people. But my experience, I was a little bit of a skeptic. I was, like, not sure someone could really help me with my dog. I think I thought I had the tools and resources to figure it out and that it was just me or the dog but I would want to tell anybody that thinks maybe they think their dog couldn't get to this point that and we get that a lot with people yeah. we get it a lot with people they just feel that their dog's broke yeah. and and I get it from a lot of people it's like well my last three dogs they were so easy to train I'm like yeah but you were 15 30 and 45 years younger or had you were out or, well you were out with your dogs more yeah. you made your dogs mind you weren't sitting on the couch with your dog yeah. in your lap eating cheetos and you wasn't working 16 hours a day back then because yeah. for some reason it seemed like some of us when we get older we work more which i can't work no more but i work a lot yeah. but you don't have the time for that dog's foundation to be built yeah. people buy they buy a dog and they put the roof on it and then a sprig falls down, and they're like, shit, I don't understand it. Yeah. And and the thing is, for me, you know what dogs is, I've had people say I throw magic powder on the dogs to get them to mind. One guy told me the other day that he felt like I just bitch slapped him and made him like it. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's a compliment. I'm not sure of that, but I think it is. <clears throat> and so and one guy told me it's so humbling to hear and watch me do what I say I can do whenever he knows it can't be done mm -hmm. and that's the biggest thing is people knows their dog can't do something yeah and yeah. you show them they can in two minutes yeah and they've yeah. been trying for six months and yeah. they're like yeah. they don't understand it but I for me I always go back to well if you work 10,000 dogs in the last 30 years yeah. you can teach dogs that too <laughs> so and, and for me it's fun to see you progress in training but I go back to I feel that it's because of all the years I've put into it mm -hmm. to be able to coach you and all the dogs we can put in front of you in the right, uh, the right step of their training to help you with all steps, mm -hmm. except getting dog bit. Yeah. We've been protecting you from that so far. <laughs> we're waiting until your year anniversary. <laughs> and we're going to turn you to the dogs. Right. Right. Yeah. We've got a feisty one coming in. Hopefully there'll be cake. Hopefully there'll be cake. There will. We will make sure that if you get bit, you get cake. So, Band-aid shaped cake. Periosity yeah. question. Any suggestions on how to get a dog to quit being glued to you when off Quit the what? How to get a dog to stop being glued to you when they're off of the leash. For me, it goes back to trying to get them with a pack of dogs. I mean, and I always stress that, and stress it, stress it, stress it. And people tell me they can't get them with dogs because they won't leave their sides. For me, you've got to be with the right dogs always. You can't go with bad dogs, mean dogs, honor dogs, uh, or your dogs end up in dog fights. But... I see people constantly, they have a gluey dog that won't leave their sides. And even for me, when we get them out in my dog park at the house, playground, it's like, get up and walk. you got to move amongst the dogs so your dogs can start learning to be a dog. And I had to tell you that. Because yeah. we would sit on the bench and your dog would get under your feet and wouldn't leave. The only way you can get him to leave is to get up because he's going to go with you. Yeah. But if you put dogs with good dogs, <clears throat> they start wanting to be good. You know, but if you put them with bad dogs, they'll start wanting to be bad. And 
I can never stress enough, if you have a glue dog that won't leave your side, the more you tell your dog to leave, the more he's going to stay with you. You can't ask your dog to leave you if he don't want to leave you. You get up, you walk amongst the dogs, and then you get him to start getting out. Now, don't go doing this if you got a fighting dog that wants to kill dogs. Don't run down to the local dog park and be like Marvin said, take him to the park and turn him loose. I did not say that. Your dog's got to be under control. But for me, I... If I got an arguing dog that comes in and wants to try to fight a little bit, uh, if it's a male dog, I'll take my female pup out. If it's a female, sometimes I'll take my male dog out. But there's times when I will take my female out. Just because my male dog that I have bear, he's a stud dog, and I don't want him to look at the other dog wrong and make the other dog mad to try to fight. There's times when I'll put my two good dogs or any one of our two dogs on our viewing area and put the other dog in the other side and let those dogs play. And then that dog will want to go be a dog. And then I'll start adding to dogs. So for me the other day, we had 22 dogs out there. And we had four or five dogs out there. When they came there, they would fight. And yeah. so for me, it was pretty fun to have that many dogs in a pack and not have no dog fights. So. And, and if you're here local, like I tell everybody, you can always get hold of Dari, uh, Martin Pierce Dog Teacher, of course, and try to come up for a lesson, and we'll be glad to try to help you with it. But for me, that's the best way to do it is to be amongst dogs and walk around. Don't just sit down. If you sit down, your dog will lay under your feet, and they won't really leave. Any more questions, Brett? Oh. All right, we're out of here. We appreciate it. And go to Martin Pierce Dog Teacher YouTube channel. Uh, like us, join us, go to Instagram and hit subscribe and keep up with us so we can try to uh, try to show you more videos. We're adding more videos weekly to our YouTube channel and we appreciate it. Thank you all. Have a good evening.